Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I've got an opportunity to work on one of Rob's reels. Rob is from North Carolina. He sent these in. This is only an interesting one. I've done a lot of uh, the Abus, but I thought we would do this one because, well, quite honestly, I haven't seen this one, and who knows what's inside. This is an Abu Garcia. It's the 6500BY, which apparently stands for Blue Yonder. It says it's an ambassador, and, uh, well, it uh, just kind of running tight. So uh, we're going to see what we can do here to uh, loosen this up for Rob who plans to take it fishing in a week or two. We're going to start by removing the exterior pieces. That's the handles and the like. And uh, while we do that, I'm going to encourage you to uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button so that you see all of the videos that I post. I work on all kinds of reels. You're basically invited into my shop to see all of the reels that uh, uh, customers have sent in. And uh, with those reels, you uh, get to learn a little bit about how they're made and how they're serviced. And uh, maybe you're thinking of buying one, you just want to learn a little bit more about the reel. Maybe you have one and you just want to uh, learn how to do it yourself, which is what this channel is about. Well, we took the guard off by removing the screw and then we, uh, we removed the cap and we can see that one, the reel hasn't been serviced in a while, which is probably a little bit why it's doing that. And just look at all of that uh, salt water buildup in there, all of the salts off of that. I hope we can get the, the handle off of this. I'm going to scrape it down. I'm going to use a pick to do that. And then I'm going to just put a little bit of penetrating oil, hopefully more as a solvent than anything, just try to have it soak in there. And next up then, like most uh, Abu reels, it's held, the gear shaft is held on to the gear, uh, the gear sleeve is held onto the gear shaft by a C-clip. That one you just want to push off. Hold one side, push the other, and be careful with this one. It can shoot, and if you lose it, well, there's a reason why I'm holding my hand in front of it here, but you can see how it comes off here. And again, it gets a lot of torsion as it tries to come out of that groove, so if you don't pay attention, this little clip is what you'll be looking for on your bench, on your desk, on your floor, wherever it may have shot off to. Well, when I take the pieces and parts off, I put them right into a parts tray. That way it enables me to find them when it's time to reinstall. Well, this one is going to be tough because of that salt. But here's a little bit of a trick. Don't try pulling it off. You may damage the, the uh, gear shaft. Don't try and just yank it off. Back off your star adjuster. Now, there's a little metal tension spring under there which sometimes will do its job and not enable you to, to kind of reverse wedge this. But this is probably the best way you can go about doing it. Just keep at it and eventually you will get it off. I right, can see it moving now. So again, there's a tension spring under there. Don't worry, you can reshape the tension spring. But if you're, if you're stuck like this and this is the only pretty much the safest way to do it without risking damage to your reel. There we go, we're off. Here's your tension spring I was referencing. So this just needs to be reshaped. That can be reshaped simple enough. There's two lines on it, just kind of hold it and bend it down. That's there to prevent the, the drag handle from wedging against the piece, so it's kind of working against us. You can see we're just flooded with salt in there. I'm just going to squirt a little bit more as I try to just remove the rest of that. You can see the salt built up on the back of the handle here. So this handle has an aftermarket knob on it. And uh, those are cool. They're, they're leverage knobs. And they help, uh, help you turn it a little bit easier. And um, while I'm just letting this other stuff kind of take a break, let's go ahead and put a little bit of oil into that bearing on the handle knob. Now there's a little slot here for a screwdriver or a dime. Or looks more like a coin slot because it is uh, got a little um, indentation, kind of an arc in there. All I'm going to do is grab my oiler, just throw some oil on there and close this back up. That'll keep this one spinning. 
And there's no question salt takes a toll on wheels. I'm just going to use a flat file here for the flat section of that handle. And just try and knock a little bit more of that salt off while we're at it. I don't want to file down the handle, but I do want to knock the salt off. I'm using a little bit of a, a basic flat file. Kind of get in the groove there. No, it's better than it was. Those two pieces going in my parts tray. We have three screws that are holding the side plate on. Next, and those are flat plated screws. Make sure when you do these that you use the screwdriver that is appropriate for the slot in the screw. Don't go with a small one that's got a lot of play. That's you risk butterflying the slot, and if you butterfly the slot, well, you may not be able to remove that screw. And maybe you get lucky this time and remove it, but you won't be able to remove it the next time. So match your screwdriver to the slot in the screws, and uh, you'll do well. All right, those are the three. This side plate should come off now. If this happens to you, don't panic. This is the way it's set up. There's a little... Uh, retainer clip that's on this side of the, uh, the reel that's holding that axle shaft in place. That's not an issue. And uh, just kind of take a deep breath and push it out. This is your retainer clip in here. There's a plastic clip inside the casing that's going to grab this little indentation on the axle shaft. You can pull that axle shaft out to clean it up. And what we saw here, or what we felt here, was that the reel was pretty sluggish. So it probably needs a good cleaning and it needs a little bit of uh, TLC. In the back we have nothing but a bushing and we have the clicker mechanism. So you do not need to take the side plate off. We have a uh, what appears to be a mag adjuster on here but I'm not seeing any mags in the wheel. That's kind of interesting. So uh, I'm not quite sure what that's all about there. Normally on a mag uh, reel all of these holes would be filled with magnetic uh, pieces. Maybe that's why this is the beyond yonder. Maybe it's beyond uh, comprehension. I don't know. I'm going to go back and check the uh, schematic for this reel afterwards. This may be a version of a mag reel that uh, just eliminated the mag. And uh, A lot of people will ask me from time to time what's the difference between this model and that model. And most of the time mechanically they're, they're very similar. So it usually is about frame size and it's about uh, line capacity and um, color, <laughs> crazy things, but nothing to do mechanically. Well, in this case, they may be sharing a frame that's a magnetic frame. And maybe that's why I have that, uh, that set up there. This one also looks like it's got a bow in it rather than uh, being flat. I don't know. Maybe somebody's been trying to over tighten it, hoping that the magnets work and there's no magnets in there. Curious. All right. Uh, we've done what we can do there. You want to oil the two bearings in this. That's why you don't have a bearing in that back end of the case. The bearings are in here. This is the one for the front side. And then you have one under that uh, click ratchet to drive in the back side. So just pull that out. It just It's compression fit. And then we can take the axle shaft that we had. It's nice and clean now. Go ahead and put some grease on there. So that it slides nicely in the spool. It goes in this way. It goes in this way. <laughs> I have my right to change my mind, right? And then when it's through the spool, put a little bit of grease onto the tag end. It's going to work its way into the bushing on the back of this reel. Just like that. We did our best to kind of steal wool clean off the, uh, the corrosion on those crossbars and um, hopefully that uh, improves that a little bit. Let's find out what's going on here. This is the classic push down variety. It doesn't have the thumb bar. Uh, we have the two screws that are holding the case on so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Again that's a Phillips head screw and this is where it's important to take these pieces that you're taking off, have them organized, but put them into a parts tray. You can leave this screw on your desk, but you're going to leave it there at your own risk. These things get knocked around pretty easily. 
uh, not intentionally, but it just seems that you want to do one thing and your hand moves and uh, knocks it around. At least that seems to be the way it works with me. We should be able to separate the case now. And this has got a modern design to it that I can fit a hundred different reels. That's not anything particular to the uh, the blue yonder variety of this reel. So uh, again, I think it's probably because this does not have a line guide in it. Uh, maybe it's got the blue color for the, uh, the spool. And uh, maybe it's using I still have that mag side on the other side that just kind of amazes me a little bit. I'm not sure what that's all about. But anyway, I do what we can do to keep them running. That's the important part. Well, this reel was a little cranky. It kind of was speaking up, chirping. And I'm guessing that the reason for that is that it's got a lack of grease. We're kind of seeing it here. Those two washers are bowed washers. They're um, tension washers that enable you to have some variability in your star adjuster. Next, we can pull that whole drag stack out of there because we want to clean the core spool shaft or the, the drag shaft. There are no coil springs on this. Rather, this bridge acts as your, your spring. And that bridge sits on two posts. So let's go ahead and gently pull it off. You don't want to be, you don't want to be uh, over aggressive here. You might snap that bridge and then you got to go find a replacement part. But just walk it up evenly and it will come off. It's been on there a long time. These two lever springs here are what puts the pressure on the yoke assembly. Here's your yoke assembly then. You pull the yoke out. That has your pinion gear on it. Then we have a little forked jack which is going to move that yoke in and out. Then we have this thumb bar. And then, well, this one's kind of riveted into, the, well, no, it's not. I was going to say it was riveted into the case, but it's not. You want to take all those pieces off because you've got old grease on here. And again, when a reel is making the noise, you want to make sure it gets cleaned. That's kind of the whole idea behind servicing a reel. Clean it. Inspect the pieces and parts, get rid of the old greases and oils, and put fresh greases and oils back on, and you're on your way to worry-free fishing. All right, this is the first one that goes back on. Took me a while to learn these, but if, if, you, uh, if you're having your doubts, go find the schematic for this. Abu has the schematics right on their website. Go find those schematics. They will uh, show you exactly how those pieces and parts go and you'll be able to align them properly just like that that's your trip lever for your thumb bar now we have our jack and you can put a little bit of grease underneath the jack where that's going to slide so what will happen is you're going to have your thumb bar is going to push down this is going to come in behind your gear stack you'll see the slots on the trip lever there this little ridge here is going to interlock with one of those. And when you turn it, it's going to push it back up. That's how you're going to get the release there. All right, this is your yoke assembly and your pinion gear. It just simply snaps in and out. It's a plastic piece that rides on it. Clean that out. Inspect your gear. We got a lot of old grease on there. That might be why this thing is kind of complaining a little bit. Check the teeth of your gear. Make sure that they're not clogged. These are just discolored, but not clogged. And that they're uniform. If there's any uh, wavering going on in there, any chips or bends or things, that's going to make it noisy. Put some good grease on there. And you'll notice we had this out. Well, you may get confused. It's easy enough to get confused. What's the front and what's the back on this? Find the one that has the angle to it. This one is kind of going up on a 45. That goes to the back of the reel, or the spool side. And so does the indentations in that uh, pinion gear. So that goes on like this. And that's how you load your, your uh, pinion gear. Again, the ramp side is over here. 
and the side that comes through the case is where the spool goes. Well, there's not much more to do on this one. We just want to remove the, the guts of this, check the rest. So this is nice and clean. We've already put some grease onto the um, bridge shaft. I'm noticing on my desk here that one piece fell off that's a very important piece. It's a copper spacer that goes on the bottom of the bridge. It goes right there and it's a small little copper washer. Don't, don't leave that out. That's got to do with the spacing of the trip and all. All right, we've cleaned that up. Put some grease on the shaft. Looks like maybe I got it wiped off a little bit. Let's go do that a little bit again. Don't overload it. Just get enough on there that it spins nice and easily. These drag washers hardly look used. So we're in good condition there. There's a small washer that goes over. And now we can pull the old grease off the main gear. And while I'm doing that, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, if you leave them in my comment section, I do try to answer them. I'm getting a lot of questions these days. I hope to get around to most of them. Uh, but please be patient. We're getting close to 20,000 subscribers now. Every one of you are appreciated who have subscribed. And those of you that watch, thank you as well. The unfortunate thing with all of that is, well, I get a lot more questions than I did when I was just starting out. Some of those are uh, timing consuming, and sometimes I just can't get to all of them. These are Carbon Tex washers, so it looks like this one has been serviced in the past, or maybe that's what it came from. I'm guessing that it's been serviced because the washer is smaller in diameter than the main gear, and usually when the uh, manufacturers make these, they make them to fit pretty snug to the main gear, as you can see by the metals, which would be the originals. You do not need to grease a Carbon Tex washer. It's an optional thing. If you do grease it, put it on, but wipe it down to the point where you can see the cross hatching. Second one is in. The first one was a round one and flat. The last one is a round one with a bell on it. And the middle one, well, that's called an eared washer. It has two prongs on it. And those go in the ridges of the main gear, just like that. Here's your last of the washers. Here's your last of the uh, round top ones. And the, and the bell on that faces up. And we have our your sleeve and we have those two tension washers so I like to put the first tension washer with the narrow side and curve facing up and then I like to put the second one down that's going to give you a lot of variability in the uh, performance last thing we need to do then well we need to put this tension spring back on And with this tension spring, you could have put this on earlier. There's no uh, right or wrong sequence to it. Just make sure that it gets back on there before you close up the reel. Look for the two points where those uh, tubes are on the back end of this. Center it and just kind of press it down. And now you have the spring set right. So what will happen now, hopefully, we'll push down. That's going to move your yoke out, and then when we turn it, it's going to pop it back up. So that's working the way it should. All right, we've greased up everything, we've cleaned up everything, we've inspected everything. This one's ready to just get back together and go fishing. Make sure your inside is closed, cleaned, and we can put a little bit of grease onto your, your spool shaft here. We did that a little bit earlier, but just where it's going to go through the bearing. I'm going to grab our side plate then, align these two holes with the two holes on the yoke. These tension washers have to come off. They go on the other side of the set. And then make sure that this thumb release is in the slot. You need a nice crisp close to make sure that that's corrected. These two can be put back in now. As 
So have a plan when you're going to do your real service. And it usually starts by getting the schematic if you don't know the reel. And it also involves taking pictures and getting the right the tools that you're going to need to do the service. If you get all of those ahead of time, you won't run into many problems later on. If you don't take the pictures, if you don't get the schematic and you forgot how a particular piece and part goes, well, that's going to be a problem. So from experience, kind of lay all of that out ahead of time. Even though you may not see it in my video itself, that's something that I do on a regular basis and it's something that I encourage you to do. Here's the um, setup now. So what we want to do on this is we just want to load this up, align the holes, and make sure when you put this on that you have a nice seam all the way around, that you don't have a gap and that there isn't any tension there. Some of the Abu models actually have a little thumb kind of screw here. It's by habit that I'm starting these by hand, but also a good practice because that way you don't cross strip the threads on the case. And once you get them started, this one's not started properly, which is why I like to do that by hand. Then go ahead and use your screwdriver to finish that. Well, I'm curious if the uh, reel does come without the mags and just happens to be that they're using that frame or if maybe somebody removed the mags, I'm not sure. All right, the star adjuster is next. You saw that we had a lot of salt in there when we uh, opened this reel up. It doesn't hurt to take a hard bristle brush or a wire brush and complete the process now that the star adjuster is off. You'll notice that I'm scraping it towards me and towards the paper towel on the bench. That's because I don't want that uh, contaminant to uh, kind of leak out onto the next reel. Now we can't put that C-clip back on until we put all of the other pieces back on. So let's get the star adjuster back on. I just had to hold it there because the shaft was spinning. If you find that the shaft's spinning, you can use your, your hand or you can use the, um, the handle as a wrench. Here's our reimagined um, tension spring. I might as well clean this clip up while we're at it. Get ready to install the handle. So we mentioned they had some, some salt hanging on this. Go grab that handle now. Handle goes on. Now that C-clip goes on. You can't clear the slot in the handle if you would put that C-clip on earlier. Let's go put that on now. Same care needs to be given to this on the way in is out. If you don't quite get it right and get it locked in, that can fly off. So make sure that you take the time to and the care to do it that way. So I got a little work to do to find out about the blue yonder fishing reel. Not sure what it was designed for. You want to make sure that this cap goes on square. Right now I'm having a little cross threading. So I just want to keep trying. There we go, now we got it right. Keep trying until you get it the right way. Before you do the final tightening, make sure that your star adjuster is way down so that you don't trap the star adjuster with your uh, tightening of that uh, handle nut. Then go ahead and tighten it. And generally, if you align the point or the flat to that um, set screw hole, you're going to get it right. And we just a little bit off. Sometimes you can grab it while it's there. Yeah, I think we got it this time. It's only one more part in the tray, which is always a good thing. What it basically says is that all the parts we took off, we put back together. Maybe we didn't put them back in the right position, but we put it back together. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down. We'll give it a try. All right. Well, that's a whole lot quieter than when it started. 
Now we put a little bit of grease into the side caps, so that's going to make sh make it a little bit tighter than it was initially. And this one just I'm just kind of surprised by that. Well, the vibration is gone in the reel, and we've got a nice turning spool. And I guess if we wanted to set it up for casting, you would back these off a little bit more, and you'll have a much you can't see it because it's a blue blue spool that's not uh, doing very well. But uh, pushed it in, got the free spool, turned it back out. Nice quiet operation. This reel's ready to go fishing again. It's got a second chance. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please like it. If you want to see more, again, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit those notifications. To everybody, I wish you well. I have a great day. Uh, great day fishing. And uh, please stay safe. Stay watching. To our first responders, thank you for all it is that you do to uh, keep us safe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.